So I heard a rumor that this house was built by an intern who lived in a studio apartment who knew absolutely nothing about home design. I mean, clearly, based on the look of this. If you don't know, this is the house of Judith Wald, the five star celebrity. I just want to address, okay, the way it kind of looks like a weird, like weirdly an American suburban house, like a blue suburban with this, like, what's it called? Slidings, siding, there we go, siding. And we've got like these porthole windows at the front. It looks a bit like a face. We also have these striped awnings which make it kind of look like a shop front and then we've got like a cherry blossom tree. We've got lavender perfectly oh not perfectly lined up. You can see it's like not very symmetrically lined up. We've got other random blobs of lavender here and there. I mean I'm all for lavender. Guys plant lavender, save the bees. It's very important but in this context like especially if you look at like the really beautiful backdrop that this house is in and then you look at the house itself. We haven't even touched the inside yet. Even just the outside for Christ's I mean, look at how random all the windows are. I, I just can't deal with it, guys. Look at these two windows next to each other. <laughs> look at these windows right at the top of the roof. Whoever made this, I'm sorry. that I, I wouldn't say they need to get fired because that is unfair, but I think they need to be retrained. And then when we look on the inside anyway, it's a little bit worse. It's like weirdly symmetrical to the point where it's like quite creepy. Like the house is like weirdly bare and empty for a big famous person's house. It honestly looks like something out of the sims one one thing that makes me laugh is that like in the main hallway here there are two toilets one with a white door one with a black door and it's basically like the same toilet but mirrored which is like so strange why do you have two bathrooms next to each other we also have like for example a study on the right side here but then symmetrically on the left we've got another study upstairs is even worse like look at this bathroom look how empty the bedroom is look at this monstrosity of a bedroom looks bloody awful. The whole thing, okay, it really is horrendous. As a part of a save file that I've been doing, I've been changing the entire property up and reimagined it. So I wanted to turn it into a modern home, a modern home that I once saw in real life that I kind of wanted to recreate in the game. I've done it in this style where it's kind of like a, what do you call it, like a C shape. I really wanted to put a swimming pool at the back, but we didn't have room. So I've just done like a balcony thing with bits coming out and a conservatory tree that is a British in me. I've got to put a conservatory in every single house. I tried to make it look pretty with all the pillars and things, make it look nice and modern because I feel like this is what a real celebrity would live in. I mean, you tell me if I'm wrong. I feel like it looks a lot better. The windows are from the growing together pack, if you're wondering. In terms of the inside, I wanted to just do like some big stairs going straight up and then upstairs. I've made enough room so that we have four bedrooms. Downstairs as well. I kind of wanted to like seclude different areas off. So I was thinking living room on the left, kitchen on dining room on the right. What are we doing at this little back bit here that looks like a castle? Absolutely no idea. Seeing it currently exists as a shell with no furnishings in it. I will pop it on the gallery. So if you did want to download it yourself, you can try and, you know, furnish it, make it look nice because I think I did an okay job with the shell. I mean, anything could be better than what it was before. <laughs> Firstly, before I forget lot traits, we'll do party place feel like gonna have a lot of parties in here. We'll also do convivial. That basically means I think you can practice social skills there. So obviously we will change up the wall and floor swatches, but I'm thinking, okay, we actually pop a kitchen in here. These days I rarely ever use cool kitchen stuff, but today I'm actually in the mood to use it. It's very rare I use it. I think it's a little bit iffy. I do think it is a hit or miss kitchen, ironically, seeing that's the whole point of the pack, but it's okay. I just think it's kind of weird how the top cap and it's so shiny and open, yet they're kind of like a little bit bare and empty on the inside. Although I won't use the cool kitchen stuff oven. I really, really love the jungle adventure oven, my favorite in the game, and we're having two of them. So I do think it is nice making an expensive house because normally I only ever use cheap things in the game because I can't really afford, because I always have this pressure, oh, I must make a start home. But today we're going all out, so maybe we can actually make a nice looking space. And I didn't forget to paint the ceilings in every room, and yes, I did paint them all beige. Now we finally got the ceilings update. Like all I do is just paint my ceilings beige so they don't really look that different to how they did before. I just feel like I have to do it. And I'm thinking in the conservatory too, we make it at least like a nice little breakfast nook. I mean, the area is big enough to do it. Although let's be honest, like in reality, Sims are just gonna eat here 
it permanently. You'd never be able to get them to eat in the dining room because they're just eating the closest possible place. Although we have got this big open space as well in the kitchen. I'm thinking, what do we actually put in here? This is the thing about making these like big obnoxious mansions. It's like, what do I actually do with the space? We've got so much space, maybe a little bit too much. Maybe we could actually close off the kitchen area itself. Then maybe we could open it up if we use some pillars, maybe something like this. I think it's a good way to add separation of space, but we still haven't answered the question, what do we put over in here? Because over here, I'd like to have a dining room and coming off with the bar. Do you know what? We're going to ignore it for now and we're going to move on to another room and then we can deal with it later. I change it to a wooden floor plank, although I do really appreciate the cobblestone wall. So I would like to keep it like that because even though it's quite modern on the outside, I want it to look relatively classy on the inside. It's a shame that in this Sims 4, we don't have those like really long obnoxious tables. Do you know the kind I'm talking about? I think it'd be really fun to do something like that in the game. Added an oversized rug. I never get to use these huge rugs because they're literally always too big. But for once, we're actually going to be able to use one. I'm also thinking of adding maybe some bookshelves in here because the space obviously needs filling. Maybe a chandelier in the middle. Although before I forget, okay, in the top of the house, you can see we have this like roof bit at the top, but I left it quite blank. Obviously, we can't build anything there. One like key characteristic of all of these big obnoxious mansions is that they have huge chandeliers and it's always like the ugliest chandelier you've seen in your life. I mean, we could always use something like this and size it up just like that. A little cell atom, not sure what to think of it. Although actually, I really like this one over here. You can't see it properly, but I think it looks nice. I do love the twerking pig. So <laughs> to keep it a little bit cursed, I am putting a twerking pig looking out the window. There we go. We can have two. They're a couple. Isn't that so sweet? Love that. Although going back to the dining room, I try to keep it like open, but also kind of messy. I like the idea of having a dark dining room. So we've got a lot of moot lighting. It's very planty, very opposite to modern, but I feel like, do you know what? This is very much me. I don't know what anybody else is like, but for me in real life, when I'm making a build, like I'd love to have a nice open plan modern kitchen, but then have like a really nice cozy dining room. Like I feel like I need both. I do want the best of both worlds. Am I admitting to being versatile? No, I am not. Solely talking about the Sims 4 builds here. Oh, and I will put in this little armchair that came with the horse ranch pack. I do like that actually. Seeming that this is a pretentious rich people house, we are most definitely having a dance floor and of course a bar. I just feel like if I was rich and obnoxious and I had more money than I knew what to do with, like I would make something like this in my house. I feel like most people would. I think the whole fun part of doing an ultra modern build is like you can get away with doing these really obnoxious things. Also, I do have a little build tip, which is if you own the get together pack, if you have like a big open space and you're like, what do I do with this space? Literally put a closet in there. Obviously it technically functions as a wardrobe, but I think they're quite realistic in terms of making it look like a storage cabinet, especially when a room is too big and you just need to like make it smaller. Although like, I think it's a little bit weird. Like, do you want to come over to my house where we're having like a little nightclub party? Like it just feels a bit strange to me. Like fair enough having a house party, but if you've got the whole nightclub thing going on, I think maybe it's a step too far, but not if you're rich. Now in a stark contrast to how dark and gloomy it is over here, I've actually done a living room that I've tried to keep actually a little bit more like homely. I say homely, there's a bloody arcade machine in here. <laughs> Nothing homely about that at all. But I wanted to make it a little bit more open and fun and vibrant, but also keep it kind of modern, but kind of lived in. It's like a games room, living room that you might say. So it's very casual. We've got a little bathroom, ping pong table, We've got a massage chair. I've also done this connected to the gym. I really wish we had like dumbbell sets. I never feel like home gyms in The Sims 4 feel quite right. And I think the main reason why is because we can't have like barbell dumbbell sets that you can place into the space. Do you know what I mean? I just feel like it would make it more cohesive. I mean, we do technically have the fitness stuff pack, although ironically, it doesn't come with that much fitness stuff. So we're gonna have to make do with our fake, fake a gym with a couple of equipment items in there. Now, in terms of this awkwardly shaped room, I'm not confronting that right now because I can't deal with it. <laughs> in terms of this little room though, I have an idea. There is a photography photo studio thing. I want to see if it fits 
it's in the room because it's literally huge. Here it is. It comes with the get to work pack. It, oh my God, it literally fits perfectly. That's great. Because I feel like if you're a celebrity, maybe you're doing photo shoots every now and then. So I just thought it would make sense for the space because we've got so much space in this house. I don't know what to do with it all. Also to make it look a bit more realistic, I guess we need to cover the windows with some huge curtains. See, I love that little space actually. Though so this mother right here. <laughs> I can't deal with it. Maybe we could turn this into like the main living room because obviously this one is like a video gaming room really. A fun room. You need I guess another kind of living room for entertaining guests. We could always pop a fireplace in that make it look a lot more fancy. Do you know what? When Growing Together first came out I said build mode was awful in this pack and I have changed my mind. I really love the build by. Yes, my camera has just died. So you're not going to be seeing my face for the rest of the video, <laughs> at least until it recharges. Although I don't really like the look of having two identical sofas like this. It's a bit strange, especially when they're quite bespoke. Whereas this one from the Desert Luxe kit, this is one of my favorites because it's just so simple and we don't have very many simple sofas in this game. And now we can either have a two seater sofa here or we can pop an armchair. I feel like an armchair would be better because if you're entertaining guests, maybe you as the entertainer sit in the armchair. I don't know how rich people work. That sounds like a very obnoxious rich person thing to do. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Although that's a bit judgmental to say rich person is obnoxious. Not all rich. Okay, all of them are obnoxious. <laughs> all of them are. It is funny, like, like I'm so bloody cheap. I don't know about anybody else, but when I buy things online, I always sort by price low to high. Or if I go into a shop, like I will just gravitate towards the sale. Wherever the sale rack is in a shop, I'm the first one to it. Like I do wonder how do people change so much when they come into money? I think, okay, this is getting a little bit deep for a Sims video, but I genuinely think like some people are just meant to be poor and that's okay. And I know that sounds really ridiculous to say, but I know a lot of people who don't have have much money but as soon as they come into money they just spend all of it immediately and it's because they don't know what to do with the money because they're not used to having it and they don't want it. I think in a weird way when you're from a background and I'm saying this as a person who does come from a poor background so I'm allowed to say it. I think when you come from a poor background it's difficult to know what to do with money. So when you have it you freak out and you're like oh my god what do I do with this so I'll, I'll just spend it all right now and you spend it all at once. I think that's what happens. That's my guess any Anyway, for me anyway, when I first moved to university in the UK, we get student grants given to you by the government. And you know, the poorer your household is, the more money that you make. Because I come from a poor family, I always got the maximum student grant. And I remember when I first got it, I literally spent it all within a month and it was supposed to last me six months. But I was just like, I have all this money and I don't know what to do with it. So I just spent it because I just genuinely didn't know what to do with it. So that's why I said what I said. Also, these days I'm into cluttering my builds a lot more. Although one thing that does really annoy me is that like everything's so jumbled in the build menu. In The Sims 3 you could create collections with your favourite clutter items so like you could just pop things down really quickly and easily. But in The Sims 4 it's a big jumbled mess. The game that was supposed to be superior to The Sims 3 ended up being inferior because it's a lot more messy to go through build mode. Yes we've got a lot better objects in The Sims 4 but it's still a nightmare to find everything. So I'm very happy with our plantalicious space. Is plantalicious a real word? It definitely is not, but I, you know what I mean. And again, actually, I'm thinking that we split this space up, even if it's just with an archway, just to make it help feel a little bit more coherent and together. Changing it to a carpet as well, I think makes it look a lot nicer. Although this potted plant, you've got to go. I'm sorry, you're too big. Here we go. I think something a little bit less obtrusive was in order. Although a TikTok hack I found guys is use this base game globe and you basically put a plant on top of it and it's kind of like a plant pot. I do it every single time now I place this plant down because I think it looks so much better like that. Also this corner's weirdly dark. I think there we go. If I use a subtle saucer light size it down even more so it's really invisible. Looks a bit brighter in here. I love it. We've got so many random rooms in this house like this long medieval corridor. So I'm thinking maybe we could pop a piano in this room over here something just to fill the space out a little bit then I think there's nothing wrong with 
turning it into like a cozy little corner. I do actually really like the book nook kit sofa. Absolutely ridiculous kit. One of the most pointless kits in the game. But I do really enjoy the sofa. I also like the little rug that it came with too. Also, just to make this room a bit cursed, I put a bookshelf and we are putting teeth in a jar. <laughs> teeth in a jar on the bookshelf just to make it a bit more funny. I do not think I'm capable of doing anything serious in this game, especially doing a serious modern build. So I feel like the little space looks quite cozy, but we've got a big empty wall over here. I could be lazy and put a painting, but sometimes using a kitchen cabinet actually makes it look nice. I mean, could something like this work? Is it a little bit too much? I mean, the answer has to be yes, it does work because I don't know what else to do with it. If you have any ideas what to do with this space, let me know, but that's all I can think of right now. Now, in terms of one of the random spaces here, this little room, obviously we need somewhere in the property to do laundry. So I'm actually thinking, honestly, we just use this tiny space for a couple of washing machines, tumble dryers. I say a couple, okay, because I imagine if you're living here, you're going to have lots of washing all of the time. It's a very tiny enclosed space for this kind of thing, but there's not much else to do with it and at least it's functional. We'll also actually put the fire alarm system thing in here. Honestly, I've never used this object in the game before, so I don't know how it works, but we're putting it in anyway. And hello, my face is back. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I hope it's not a bad thing. So seeing this little door here leads to the outside, but from this side, I want to do another door on this side because we don't have one and it would make a lot of sense because you know this house is like a bit of a labyrinth so we need to make it as easy as possible for our sims that's the only purpose of this hallway it just gets you outside or it gets you to the washing machine in terms of this room i'm thinking big obnoxious bathroom because the only downstairs bathroom we have is the one that's in the games room so it would be nice to have another big obnoxious bathroom with a big obnoxious toilet one that speaks to you would it be weird to have a bath in the downstairs Downstairs bathroom because like who would be showering down here? Do you know what I mean? Because the main bathroom would be upstairs. Unless we use, do you know what? I genuinely in the entire game, like I never use these corner bathtubs. Like I just don't see a purpose for them. Now is the time to have a corner bathtub. I'll never ever probably end up using one ever again. So we may as well use it now. Although to be fair, like I understand the issues the original person must have had making Elizabeth Ward's house. I mean, what am I in about Elizabeth Ward? Her name was Judith Ward, the townie that's supposed to live on this lot. Don't know where Elizabeth came from. Anyway, I understand the issue because it's quite a big lot, like pretty huge. Even in this bathroom, I'm thinking like, what do we put in here? It's too big for its boots because we've got everything we need in here. Unless we just do it the lazy way and add one of these like bathroom shelving units. We could also use this horrific floor rack that came with the Get Famous pack, the one that was in the original build. I feel like we need to pay homage to the original build build in some way. Also, I had a little bit of a eureka moment in terms of this space because it's very difficult to know what to do with it. I'm actually thinking we make another living room. I know you're thinking such a third living room. <laughs> well, you see, originally this was meant to be like the guest room, but it's starting to feel like too homely. I feel like guests wouldn't want to be in here. And of course, this is the games room. So I feel like maybe we just need a more formal living room. Assuming that this is a fancy pants house, like we've got to have something that's a little bit fancy pants in here. Believe it or not, I'm actually using a lot of the stuff from the Flamingo kit here. What's the official name of the Flamingo, not Flamingo kit, Peacock kit? What is the official name of that weird Peacock kit? I don't remember what it's called, but you know the one that came with like this horrific wallpaper here? So I'm using some of the stuff from that kit. Not everything in the kit is nice, but some of the things in like the more neutral swatches, they do look very good, I admit. Also like, was it a peacock that it came with? Yeah, it is actually a peacock. I actually want to size it up and make it like a really funny centerpiece. Again, like I feel like this is like something a person who has too much money would do. Actually, yeah, I want to keep it pink as well, the most obnoxious severe color. And however much I detest my wedding stories, did it not come with some kind of tea set? There we go. This 
this thing. I mean, they could have just given us the ability to have a kettle with cottage living, but they didn't. But we have this instead. It's fine. Do you think it would be severe to go all out there and actually use like this crazy wallpaper? I've never used it because it just looks so horrific. Like, I wish they just toned it down a little bit and made it actually usable. Although I've made like a little divider wall here. We'll definitely use this pattern on it though, because I quite like that. Maybe we should just be daring guys and use this. Even if we just made it like a feature wall or do we just go on? No, we we'll make it a feature wall. I can't do the whole thing like that. It's too much. Just a feature wall. You know, I was going to say, oh, we're doing a formal regal living room. <laughs> it's an absolute mess. A mess on purpose. Okay, maybe just the story in the law of the person who bought this house, okay? They like the idea of getting a modern build, but when it comes down to it, maybe they just also love it to be very eclectic. I mean, as I said before, that is me. I feel like I don't know if anybody else is like this, but I feel like I'm in the mood sometimes for a bit of both. Again, I'm talking about the build, not topping and bottoming. Am I a top? Am I a bottom? That is for me to know and for you to never ever find out. Unless you're at least six foot tall, financially stable and emotionally stable and you have blue eyes, like maybe I will let you know. Otherwise, I'm not telling you. And you know what? I think it's fun sometimes to like get a big tall vase like this and just plop it inside this little table I put down. It's a little bit weird. But I think sometimes when you just do quirky kind of things like that, it makes the space look a lot more alive. Now, actually, I think I'm going to bring this wall out even more just to divide the space up a bit more. Also, because it's me and I do like to make everything bloody curse, I am popping gnomes all over here. Just makes the build a bit more fun. I don't like plain and average. I know people in general general love plain and average. That's why everybody likes to build the exact same American suburban house every single time. But like sometimes, like I just have this thing in me that's like, this feels too normal and I can't deal with it. I've genuinely like never been good at dealing with normal looking things. You know, like I start a Sims Let's Play thinking, oh, this will be lovely. Then immediately my mind jumps to how can I this up. <laughs> At least we made some use out of the little spaces all down here. So I'll be honest with you, I did give up. Oopsie daisy. I lost a bit of motivation, but I came back to this build later and I feel like it's finally done. And I've done some massive changes. So I actually use a lot of stuff, seeming that this is the Get Famous world. I use a lot of stuff from the Get Famous pack, but also Vintage Glamour because they're basically the same pack. I use the Vintage Glamour wallpaper all over the walls here just to give it a bit more of a classier edge. Also, I sorted this area out I wasn't feeling it so I made the living room look a lot more cohesive by doing a full-on wall also I added these little trophy things because it reminded me of walking into like a Pokemon gym you know like in the old school Pokemon games oh the camera batteries died so uh, you can't see my face for the rest of this video <laughs> anyway you know like the old school Pokemon games where they had the little statues in the gyms I wanted to do that so I did I actually went literally crazy with the bedrooms because it's a get famous pack like I really wanted to just go all out there and make like the most ugly, obnoxious, rich people bedroom you've ever seen in your entire life. Oh, and here's the, uh, the balcony, a bit more sleek and modern looking. We also did a walking wardrobe over here. We've also got a little bathroom. Again, this was all with the Get Famous Fat Well, mostly. We've got a spare room, which was done entirely almost with vintage glamour stuff because I wanted a little bit of a darker room in the house. And then for the main bedroom, I wanted to keep it Get Famous, but I wanted to make it look a lot less dramatic than this monstrosity. I didn't want both main bedrooms to be that severe. So this one is a little bit more sorted, you might say. A bit more plain looking and we do have like a kind of like a walk-in wardrobe. Also, now I was going to make either another bedroom or a hobbies room in here, but I actually decided to turn it into a panic room. We've got the bookshelf door, like the hidden bookcase door, which I thought was cool. And we've basically got like basic amenities. So we've got like a toilet, a sink. We've got a sofa and a bed and a mini vending machine fridge thing. Also, we've got the money vault in here as well, which I thought was a cool idea. So maybe you could have your sim live in a panic room, call it the panic room challenge. I don't know. Anyway, as I said, sorry, my camera battery died. This is on the gallery if you want it. Otherwise, if you want to keep up with my safe art, you might also enjoy the next video here. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.